Denny, Styrian State Television, as you know, is now airing uh, excerpts of, uh, of this video of you uh, that was shot. Uh, I'm not sure how they got this video. Do you know how they got it? Did they intercept it? Um, while I was trying to talk to CNN, I was online for like 20 minutes. So it's live broadcast. I don't know how they got it. We was, this is all private. See, we should have. This has all been deleted. We have to delete all this stuff. Right. I want to ask you some specifics. They say the truth uh, of Danny the Zionist. That's the right. title of this, and it's obviously he heavily edited. Uh, they say at one point, and I'm going to show this. They say that you were saying, "Get the target ready to shoot." Right. No, no, shoot it like I'm telling you. Let's right. take a look. No, no, it's wrong. And then the, the banner in Arabic says, notice the sound of an explosion after he gave the order. They're making it seem like you were fabricating the sound of explosion. Yes. Okay. If you exactly watch the, the, it was about six minutes I was talking to you actually on CNN that time. There was no shooting going on at the time. So if I was, was telling him to shoot so I can make it look like there's a war going on, uh, there would be shooting on the back uh, on the back sound while I was talking to you. They, they said the sound of the bang there was the sound of you guys no. faking a shot. That that was sound a long way ago. Even at the time, the area I was sitting in wasn't even being hit. They were hitting another area. As I told you, it was called Khaldi. It's about 15 kilometers away from where I am. I want to play another part of this uh, of of their tape. Your cameraman is saying, "Say there that shells fell and we are pulling bodies." Yes. Let's take a look. The, the banner there says even the cameraman is lying. What was happening there? Uh, look, as any journalist works, as anyone who's trying to work, it isn't just me, all the reporters inside, they tell us uh, you have to say this. This is actually what's going on. I don't know everything that's going on in there. They get the information, how many people have been killed. So I'm not really a reporter. They remind me, don't forget to say this. Tell them there's, we have people dead, people underneath the destruction, so I don't forget. They also say that you are basically have been paid by CNN. Yeah. Um, that's categorically untrue. Just for the record, of course, have right. you ever worked for CNN? Have you ever received any money from CNN? I have not received one penny for CNN. I am not a CNN journalist. You've been very upfront on the fact that you went there to join the Free Syrian Army, yeah. that, that you wanted to yes. join. So you're not pretending to be... Uh, 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 an impartial journal. No, no, no. I want to, and I still want to join the Free Syrian Army if they would accept me. I would love to join the Free Syrian Army. As Defense Secretary Leon Panetta faced some tough questions from Republican lawmakers over the U.S. pursuing a diplomatic course in Syria. Senator John McCain. Can you tell us how long, how much longer the killing would have to continue? How many additional civilian lives would have to be lost in order to convince uh, you that the military measures of this kind that we are proposing necessary to end the killing and force to leave power, how many more have to die? 10,000 more? 20,000 more? How many more? I think, I think the question, as, as you stated yourself, Senator, is the effort to try to build an international consensus as to what action we do take. The effort to try to build an international consensus as to what action we do take. The effort to try to build an international consensus as to what action we do take, uh, that makes the most sense. Uh, what doesn't make sense is to take unilateral action at this point. Uh, as, uh, as Secretary of Defense, before I recommend that we put uh, our sons and daughters in uniform, uh, in harm's way, I've got to make very sure that we know what the mission is. I've got to, we, I've got to make very sure that we know whether we can achieve that mission, at what price, uh, and whether or not it'll make matters better. In Washington, a call for airstrikes against President Bashar al-Assad's regime. U.S. Senator John McCain says the time has come for a new U.S. policy regarding Syria. Rather than closing off the prospects for some kind of negotiated transition that is acceptable to the Syrian opposition, foreign military intervention is now the necessary factor to reinforce this option. Assad needs to know that he will not win. But time is running out. Assad's forces are on the march. Providing military assistance to the Free Syrian Army 
and other opposition groups is necessary. But at this late hour, that alone will not be sufficient to stop the slaughter and save innocent lives. Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Wednesday, March 7th, 2012, and I'm Darko. You can check out my website, it's ggnonline.com, and on YouTube, my channel is ddarko2012, and my backup channel is ddarko2013. Okay, so um, you just saw right there the first one, uh, CNN doing some damage control as far as their little um, Syrian activist who uh, just basically goes on there and creates the whole illusion. Uh, they're not even on board with each other i mean not on board but they don't even know what each other is doing i mean the united nations is going in there only because the government the assad government actually cleared out the the uh the syrian uh, rebels that are being armed by the west even though mccain's calling for them to be armed so you see it's just a big mind freak so the Obama regime moves to aid Syrian opposition, i.e. the rebel terrorists, just like in Libya. It says here in the fleet, uh, piece below, we read that this, quote, stops short of providing any direct military assistance to the armed opposition, end quote. It goes, if you want to read detailed uh, voluminous accounts of how the U.S. covertly and illegally provides weapons to any state or group it pleases, it says here, see Spider's Web, the secret history of how the White House illegally armed Iraq by Alan Friedman and the compromise Clinton, Bush, and the CIA by Terry Reid. In other words, the plane loads of weapons are going to be given to uh, al-Qaeda, which are already there, flown in from Libya, So also armed by the West. So Syria, uh, Clinton admits U.S. on the same side is al-Qaeda. So yeah, go in there and check that out. So Obama regime is moving to provide direct assistance to the internal opposition in Syria for the first time, making a shift in U.S. policy toward a more aggressive plan to help oust President uh, Bashar al-Assad. So it's not even in line with the, with the, with the defense secretary, right? So, oh, man. It'll, it really, it's madness is what it is. It's chaos, but it's ordered chaos. So Strat for leaks, uh, NATO commandos and illegal special ops in Syria. So we have undercover NATO troops already in Syria, despite denials from their parent governments, according to leak uh, brief from highly placed analysts. The author of the letter claims that the U.S. officials said without saying that uh, special operation force teams, presumably from the U.S., U.K., France, Jordan, and Turkey, are already on the ground focused on reconnaissance missions and training opposition forces. He goes on and says the idea of hypothetically is to commit guerrilla attacks, assassination campaigns, and trying to break the backs of the Alawite forces uh, elicit collapse from within, which is what they're trying to do in Iran as well, starving them with sanctions. So this title, this headline makes sense. General says Syrian air defense complicates U.S. options, talking about this uh, no-fly zone, uh, humanitarian corridor, and aerial blockade. Uh, it says here, U.S. top commander says that the advanced air defense weapons Russia has provided Syria's regime would make it difficult to establish a no-fly zone there as part of an effort to help the rebellion, i.e. regime change. Hugo Chavez of Venezuela slams the West, expresses support for Syria. He said the United States government and many European countries are failing to recognize the sovereignty of a people such as the Syrians. So here's the madness headline, UN aid chief visits Syria's stricken Baba Amr area, and it says uh, into the former rebel-held district of Homs, where dissidents have reported bloody reprisals by uh, Assad's forces. So it was held by them, the, the journalists that were over there, the one with the patch, uh, Colvin, whatever, she was, I remember I covered this article, they were killed by the, reportedly killed by these rebels. 
So the opposition, then the Assad's government came in, got them out. Then the UN or the Red Cross came in to start help, finally helping because they got the rebels out of there from wreaking havoc. And now the United Nations could come in, but they're going to blame it on Assad, who cleared the area out. You see, it's a big double think. I'm not saying you know great, great uh, you know Syrian Assad or anything like that, but uh, you know it, it's a sovereign country, dude. Leave them alone. You know it's like if Panetta only uh, lived out what he said, it may, maybe it would be a different world. But it, but they say one thing and they do another. So, you know, on Iran, Obama assails Republican candidates for beating the drums of war, and that makes sense because we go into this article right here: Israel and United States partners in international crime. Talking about how the corporate media has recently portrayed a narrative where we see the West apparently warning Israel against a unilateral attack on Iran. So, talking about going in alone. Uh, the article goes on and cites this uh, document with which path to Persia, sorry, published by the corporate funded Brookings Institute, which goes on to admit that its intention of U.S. and Israeli policy towards Iran is to provoke a war they knew Iran would neither want nor benefit from. It says here it would be far more preferable if the United States could cite an Iranian provocation as justification for the airstrikes before launching them, i.e. a false flag attack. Then we have Israeli Prime Minister to discuss Iran with Obama. That's right. So uh, Natiyanu landed in Washington, D.C. on Monday ahead of a meeting with U.S. President Barack Obama. Natiyanu of Israel gives Obama the Esther Scroll, a, he a Hebrew tome containing details of a plot to annihilate the Jews in ancient Iran. Quote, then too, they wanted to wipe us out, end quote, said Natiyanu to Obama. It says it's a 25-year-old story of a plot uh, by Haman, the minister of Persian king uh, Xerxes, to annihilate the Jewish people living in Persia, but his scheme is foiled by Esther, the king's wife. It's weird that name, too, is what Madonna took. Israeli fighter jet crashes in U.S. military base. That's right. And it was at Fallon Naval Air Station. That's pretty much in uh, near Reno. I've been there before. And it was for a special detachment for Top Gun. So those are the best of the best. They're probably there training with the United States for what's coming. Republican candidates bid to be toughest on Iran. So, yeah, all the neoconservatives are all talking about bomb, bomb, bomb Iran. I mean, dude, John McCain was actually quoted as saying that bomb, 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 bomb Iran. I mean, these guys are sick in the head. Ron Paul calls for a complete pullout of U.S. forces from India. So if you're not sick in the head, well, you're probably not going to be president. If you are, well, then you're going to get shot in the head. So Rick Santorum tells APAC. Uh, the American Israeli lobbyist group Obama turned his back on the people of Israel. That's a that's a really good way to uh, help get elected. It'll boost your uh, chances, right? Say I support Israel, you get elected. Iran trying to build nuclear missiles capable of hitting London. Cameron, the Prime Minister of the UK, says uh, North Korea has allegedly tested nuclear warheads for Iran, so North Korea is testing nuclear warheads from Iran. More of the propaganda here. Government officials concerned over Iranian-made smart concrete withstanding U.S. bunker-busting bombs. So we better pour more money into Raytheon and uh, Northrop Grumman uh, with your tax dollars to try to figure out that problem. U.S. Congress is mulling a new measure to expel Iranian banks from SWIFT. And this is an uh, electronic money transfer system for international transactions. And we have economic warfare and strangling sanctions punishing Iran for its defiance of the United States, really the world empire. But this is what it's all about. Israeli officials starve Iranians to stop nukes. See, the thing about Iran is, is that uh, the, way they, the way they're looking at them is that they're crazy, they're psychotic. But they're okay they're maintaining somehow well the problem is is once they're attacked they're going to get insane they're going to start actually defending themselves i mean i think that's how they're viewing this whole thing with the nukes they don't want it in the hands of people that may uh, try to assert their sovereignty which is why you have an article like this pakistan possesses up to 110 nuclear weapons report says remember i said this i said pakistan they got to get rid of their nuclear weapons because pakistan is on the fringe right now and they don't have them in their grasp you can check out this article. Links will be posted in YouTube's video description, United Against Iran. These are all the ones in blue with favorable views with Iran, Pakistan, Indonesia, Nigeria, and Lebanon kind of on the fence there. And how these countries view uh, a nuclear Iran, i.e. Uh, Egypt, Jordan, Nigeria, are definitely not on board. So as far as Central Asia goes, Iran is urging stronger iranian Tajikistan trade ties, but also Iran is muscling in Azerbaijan. After I believe it was Israel that sold them weapons, uh, Romanian lawmaker punished for Holocaust comments. 
He was quoted as saying historical data shows that or showed that a total of 24 Jews were killed during the Lazi uh, pogrom by the German army. So Sova will be sent to Washington, D.C. in the United States to visit the Holocaust Memorial uh, Museum along with two Romanian NGOs firing at him. But the Holocaust denial is considered a crime in Romania. Thank you.